a lot of you would uh, probably know us from the past. Uh, we started off with curtain wall testing and facade testing about 25 years ago, and we forayed into offering fire testing in 2009. Started off with a Steiner tunnel and a three by three furnace, supporting the development of standards and fire compliance in the whole of MENA region. The last six years, we have added uh, more and more capacity as well as capability, mainly on the back of uh, the compliance requirements related to cladding fires that have been happening around the world. Uh, we have the propagation tests as per standard NFPA 285, as well as the British standard, the BSA 414. We continue to have a small scale tests for enabling investigation of uh, reaction to fire properties. Also, we have added two large furnaces last year, the four meters by five meters horizontal and the four meters by five meters vertical furnace. With this as the background, today's session is about fire doors and specific to fire doors. We will be tying a few things together, talking about how fire testing is done and certification and listing is done, mainly to help everybody else uh, in, in a better understanding when you are procuring fire doors. So some of you who may have attended the previous sessions, I did a, a webinar in the past talking about passive fire protection I'm going to take a small pause to solve the audio. Please bear with me. everybody to please ensure that your mics are muted it seems i cannot hear anybody but everybody else can hear me so i will continue the session today uh, there seems to be some glitches which is uncommon heading back to talking about uh, passive fire protection and we all understand that uh, today's topic very specific to containment um, I will be talking about fire doors and how the fire and life safety strategy is implemented related to fire doors. A lot of us would know and understand that there is the risk of fire and the risk is related to the occupancy type. Certain occupancy types are considered slightly higher risk than others. And hence, you would understand and notice that when it comes to larger or riskier occupancy types, the implementation uh, as well as quality assurance requirements related to all 
uh, fire protection mechanisms is very, very stringent. I will be talking as generally as I can because listeners who are uh, logged into the webinar come from different countries in different regions. Uh, in a sense, all the codes which are talking about fire safety across the world, they insist on the implementation of fire and life safety mechanisms in a gradient that becomes more and more stringent when it comes to riskier or occupancies where there is a potential risk. So keep this in mind and I will then talk about related that how you need to be more and more sure when you are procuring fire protection related products in riskier occupancies. Today we will be focusing more on fire doors as against generally the webinar series which talks about reducing risks across passive fire protection. And a very key element related to fire doors is fire testing. Even though a lot of people believe and think that a fire test report is probably sufficient to get the assurance, but there are several steps which link just further from a fire test report to getting the assurance which is badly needed when we are talking of procuring fire rated doors on large projects. As we will know and understand through the course of the webinar that a fire test which is done on a given fire door will only and only specify or show the result of one fire test. So let's look at what happens in a fire test. I'm assuming that some of you in the audience have witnessed a fire test or maybe more than a fire test and probably you have someone who have even conducted fire tests. So I'm going to give you a brief overview of what happens during a fire test. A fire test when in action tries to simulate an environment which is a post flashover environment. Here in a quick running video that you see on the top right, you will notice that two wooden fire doors are being tested in our furnace. The environment behind the doors is that of simulating a post flashover condition of uh, a fire. And what the tests of different backgrounds in a sense validate that the fire should not move or cross over from the non from the fire side to the non fire side. Our laboratory is accredited for conducting tests for many different standards, British, American, European, Indian, and many other local standards of the region. A fire test would typically emulate this that how uh, different requirements of different regions uh, come across. There are two criteria which I would like to talk about here. Uh, we talk about integrity and we talk about insulation. These are two commonly used uh, parameters in defining the fire resistance capability of a fire door or even any other partition. Uh, for a detailed understanding, when we talk about integrity, integrity means that the fire does not cross over in any form for the fire door and insulation, which becomes important in some types of occupancies, specifically where the doors are on egress or uh, exit paths, that the ambient temperature next to the door is not high enough to auto ignite something coming its way. Let me quickly open a poll for uh, everyone who is attending, and I would request you to uh, punch in your answers to the poll for me to get a better understanding of uh, everyone's position when it comes to having witnessed fire tests and what you really think about fire tests. There is a short video which shows a failing fire test here.
while you participate and I urge each one of you to answer the questions on the poll. Some of you may have noticed the explosion on the video on the right side. The video on the right side does not uh, represent a fire door being tested. <clears throat> it is a video of a partition wall system that exploded fairly badly, unfortunately. And uh, we were lucky that the engineer was unhurt and test, uh, of course, very, very badly. While I give you a few minutes, I would like to share that it's very common for a lot of manufacturers and sponsors to come to us and ask this question that how many samples in a month pass or fail? And this is a very interesting question because unfortunately there is no pattern that we have yet been able to arrive at and there's no straight answer to how some products fail and some products pass. Uh, but definitely it is uh, it is a favorite favorite question so often when videos are shown uh, on the internet it's more see with fire doors passing uh, beautifully so i thought let me share a quick video of how bad it can potentially get when a fire door actually does not comply so while i let you finish off the poll i'm going to move forward uh, and try and link how a typical fire resistance test uh, links with the supply chain of what is being sold in the market and what is being offered to see in the market. Some of you are familiar with this, but I'm going to quickly talk about certification and listing as a concept. Certification and listing uh, is mainly focused at the manufacturing location. Certification and listing ensures that the manufacturer of the product is able to demonstrate uh, repeatability of production and one or several products uh, that they manufacture could be audited, tested, and the manufacturing process of the factory is audited regularly to ensure that the products that are being manufactured and supplied with the certification mark will always comply to these standards. Now it's common for certification bodies to list a fair amount of detail of how they certify or to what extent they certify. And I'm gonna share a little more over the slides that come, but in the next slide, let me quickly share with you how our certification directory looks like and what all is usually available when it comes to certification and listing that is shown. What you see here is a, a quick video from how our certification body, our certification directory operates. And we will show you typically how a certificate looks like, what all it covers. It covers the product type, it tells you what standard the product has been certified to, under what certification scheme of ours we are offering the certification and listing, obviously the results of the fire tests, and a very, very important part is the list of limitations that we are talking of when we show uh, the components and the details to which fire doors have been listed with us. Uh, complete with drawings, general drawings of the system, which will enable uh, users of the certificate to cross-reference and link what they see and as a supply, as well as what they see as specifications and whether they match or not. With this kind of a background, uh, I would like to bring in and explain the context that when a fire door assembly is tested, the test can and is conducted only for a given assembly, which means the combination of components, materials, as well as where the product is coming from. There is some degree of flexibility that certain standards whether they are European or American, they provide. 
when it comes to extrapolations of results, what all can one result lead to uh, as compared to another, and so on and so forth. But in general, it is important to know and understand as a link that a fire test report is just that. It defines how a specific and a given sample behaved, whereas a certification looks at the manufacturer, manufacturer's quality systems, procedures, as well as a certification adds a large amount of testing data plus experience of the certification and listing body to provide confidence to the buyers who are using the certification and listing as a tool to, to ensure that what they are buying is correct or not. I'm going to very quickly talk about uh, how certification works within the certification world. What you see on your screen is a table from uh, ISO 17067. This is an ISO standard, which is a guidance document to certification bodies who are designing uh, certification schemes and certification programs to be implemented. This table is also referred in the UAE Fire and Life Safety Code of Practice in uh, defining the kind of certification bodies and the certification schemes which are acceptable uh, for UAE civil defense to accept certification and listing as a route to conformity for them to accept or reject certificates of different certification bodies. You would notice that surveillance and licensing as mechanisms described in how certification and listing should be done vary from different scheme types. And the scheme five or the type five, which is referred with the blue column here, is what the UAE Civil Defense uh, has selected. So what does a fire door assembly look like? A typical fire door has an extremely large number of components, which are supplied by different manufacturers, manufactured at different locations. This is very much, very unlike a product, a single product like a smoke detector or a fire extinguisher, which could be manufactured at one manufacturing location. Components like hardware, typically have many other criteria, many other specifications that they need to comply to, that they have to comply to when it comes to mechanical properties and so on and so forth. The same goes for, let's say, door closers here. Uh, I show on the screen an image which defines how uh, door closers in the European norm are defined for its category of use, its durability, uh, the weight of the door in which a door closer can operate in. And one criteria among ever, several others is whether the door closer is suitable or is not suitable for a fire door. So how do these things link up? It is critical to understand that a fire door assembly when tested with a specific set of hardware is qualified to operate in that in that manner only and only when that set of hardware and that set of components is put together and installed in a way that the supplier of the fire door assembly has prescribed so i'm going to open a quick poll to take your view about how you feel is the role of different stakeholders when it comes to fire door assemblies being tested. While I explain to you in my point of view and in our understanding of how this operates from a certification body standpoint. Hardware is something that uh, is very commonly and very often uh, changed and it is often not in the hands of a fire door manufacturer. Hardware is something that uh, not only has the functionality for the door to operate, but also has aesthetics 
and other aspects related to longevity of performance of the fire door. And uh, this is something that is often changed, often desired to change, and several certification bodies in the world have evolved in uh, mechanisms to get over the original concern that if a fire door assembly has been tested for a given hardware, it will only operate uh, and remain certified and listed for that given hardware. Certification and listing as a next level is done for hardware, where in a level of assurance is achieved by auditing the manufacturing premises of hardware manufacturers to ensure that the hardware suppliers are able to demonstrate a repeatability of their uh, manufacturing processes and hence arrive at a kind of interchangeability. The way this is approached is different when it comes to the European compliance markets and North American compliance markets. Uh, in Europe, the interchangeability of hardware is more defined uh, because the extended application of certification and listing is done with the help of published extended application standards. As when it comes to uh, the North American certifications to UL or NFPA standards, uh, the compliance or the interchangeability of certified and listed doors is uh, governed mainly by the certification body's internal rules of how this needs to be done. So moving on, who do you think is responsible for getting a fire door certified and listed? Uh, the answer to the question lies in the fact that in a given contract, who is the supplier of the fire door assembly? Because the contract for supplying the fire door is given to a given organization, typically a fire door manufacturer, a joinery, or a company which is selling the fire door assembly needs to take ownership of what they are supplying and how they are supplying along with installation, along with what is the recommended components. Along with this, a very good hint for a buyer or a specifier is to note and understand what fire door assembly is listed. As some of you may have seen in a quick video that I showed in the beginning that the details to which uh, fire door certificates are defined and detailed. Every component or type of component is listed. Let's move forward to understand how this works practically in the ground when it comes to specific projects and how in specific projects procurement is done right from specification. It is common for large occupancies, high risk occupancies, for example, hotels, malls, hospitals, airports, that a very comprehensive fire and life safety plan is designed. This comprehensive fire and life safety plan is going to factor in many aspects uh, of how compartmentalization needs to be done and is being done. As a result of this fire and life safety plan, you get something which people in the industry know as the door schedule. While from a fire and life safety plan designer, the door schedule <coughs> excuse me, has a very important information related to how many doors will be required to comply with how many minutes or hours of rating. And obviously in regions like the Middle East, which allow several different types of test methods or standards for compliance, these door schedules will also define the, te the, the test methods. The door schedule hence forms a key document for procurement, 
and the door schedule hence is an RFQ or a tender document given out by typically a contractor who will procure the fire doors and have them installed or install them by their own uh, installers. Of course, architects, owners, and other stakeholders who may want a different finish, a different hardware, etc., come in to play while designing the door schedule. So this key RFQ document forms the basis, and it's a very important part of the whole process of procurement of fire doors. Again, the risk perception of the occupancy type plays a very, very important role in this procurement process. If you have 30 row houses over a two-story villa, and the door schedule for these maybe 60 doors, uh, the risk perception is much lower than for the 1500 doors, which will be procured for a hospital or a hotel. And hence, the intensity by which the compliance requirement needs to be checked will be different for these two different kind of projects. Care must be, care must be taken that the contractor here is typically the organization who is taking on the responsibility and hence the liability of complying to what the door schedule calls for. This compliance, if not done correctly to what has been specified by the fire consultant, will lead to him taking on the liability of a potential fire hazard that could happen. They need to discharge their role effectively and in a very, very important way. This is where the certification and listing comes in and is a very, very important tool for distinguishing what doors are certified and what doors are not certified. Let's take an example that you may have a list of 500 doors. These 500 doors need to comply to different specifications and different requirements. And the tender could go out to five or 10 or 15 or maybe just a single fire door supplier. It is up to this fire door supplier how this fire door supplier is able to demonstrate his capability to comply to the complete fire door schedule. And this is where the role of the certification body comes in. The certification body's certificate or set of certificates could either be used as an assurance that the manufacturer is capable of manufacturing a fire rated door by virtue of two out of 40 door types that are out that are tendered so maybe two of the 40 door types match exactly to what the rfq says and between the procurer and the supplier which is the contractor and the fire door supplier there could be a fair degree of confidence saying well they're a good manufacturer, they have a good track record. I'm sure the balance fire door designs, which are not listed, are not certified, will also comply. This route, of course, is to your risk, to the risk of the contractor, to the risk of the authority having jurisdiction, and there are several stakeholders who actually end up taking on this risk. But if the project is of high risk, then obviously each door type should either be tested or should have a backup engineering evaluation document from the certification body as well as have certification labels which will be used for verification and uh, detailed inspection done when the doors are installed so what do you see how do you ensure that the doors that are getting installed or already installed are complying or are fire rated doors 
This level of inspection could be done at any of the several stages. You could actually be an insurance company who is trying to insure a given property, which could be a few years old. And you now understand that the risk perception is high. And if you are wanting to check some fire rated doors and you see that there is a fire door label, then obviously the fire door label can go back and you can track back a fair amount of data from the fire door label. In the middle of the screen, you see a sample fire door label, which our company provides as a certification body. And when we do this, it has a QR code and the QR code can link back to the certificate on the certification directory, which you have just seen. <coughs> Excuse me. So who is responsible when it comes to the supply chain? Well, the, the flow that I explained uh, in a few slides before is a very general flow. And I'm going to take a small deviation and talk about how UAE Fire and Life Safety Code of Practice looks at uh, responsibility. They have published a chapter, which is responsibility of stakeholders, and they have defined a, a large set of stakeholders who have given responsibilities. To begin with, I'm going to mark out a few points. This is from the UAE Fire and Life Safety Code of Practice from uh, chapter three. This is the means of egress and how components and door assemblies are perceived by the civil defense. Mind you, in the UAE, a fire door supplier needs to be registered as a fire door supplier by demonstrating certification and listing of one of several different fire door designs that they manufacture. They hence and then receive a COC document. A COC document would have one or few fire door designs which are listed. And this forms the gating criteria or the criteria by which the fire door supplier can go to a contractor, can go to a consultant and demonstrate that he is authorized to sell products. He is authorized to manufacture fire doors in UAE and sell them and he should be chosen. But you must understand that this is only an entry point. The fire doors for a given project and the level of assurance required for a given project is the responsibility of other stakeholders in the supply chain for a given project. I get this question a lot from a lot of people related to hardware um, and hardware certification and listing is a tool to enable the certifiers of fire door assemblies to easily interchange and write engineering evaluations, whether different hardwares can be used or not. But the civil defense in the UAE does not require any registration for hardware suppliers on their own. I'm going to talk about the last point. This is again from the UAE Fire and Life Safety Code, where it very specifically talks about the design consultant and his responsibility to achieve and design the requisite fire protection and mainly to create the right door schedule and also to ensure that the correct fire doors are being used. I'm going to open another poll, which is the last poll in uh, today's. Uh, webinar, which is going to come to an end very soon. Uh, and, and just to understand uh, from the listeners. What category of uh, responsibility you may be in when it comes to UAE fire and life safety code of practice. I know we have listeners uh, and a large number of listeners who are not from the UAE. And of course, this does not apply to you as responsibilities in your own country, but this is just to bring about how in a given country like UAE, the code has been able to define. Several stakeholders 
right from the owners to developers, consultants, contractors, fire consultants, which are called house of expertise in the UAE, specifically in Dubai, manufacturers and agents, labs and certification bodies like us, uh, FM companies, and right up to residents and tenants. All these stakeholders have a role in designing, implementing, maintaining fire and life safety in given buildings. Depending on the type of occupancy is being discussed, the mandatory responsibility of some stakeholders could be much more stringent and could have a much higher uh, risk. So while I urge all of you to try and quickly uh, give answers to the poll questions, uh, I would like to open the chat for people who may want to write in some questions or queries. Uh, I'm gonna move to the last section of fire door performance in terms of how liability is defined and who takes care of liability in a very generic way. There are two layers. Uh, of course, the government or the jurisdiction in the given country could set baseline guidance by virtue of code documents, by virtue of uh, guidelines for construction where they define roles and responsibilities of different stakeholders just like I am giving an example here of the UAE, where within the UAE, the Fire and Life Safety Code of Practice talks about the roles and responsibilities. But there is another layer, and this is the layer of a contract. And this becomes very, very clear with an example that I'm going to show to you of a, of a very typical example of uh, of a given building that you have several stakeholders, several stakeholders who are involved in a project, right from the stage when uh, the elevation is visualized or planned or thought about, right up to when the building is commissioned. What you see in the blue ribbons on the screen, uh, where a buyer and seller is defined between, for example, on the top left, a developer and an owner would have a contract with an architect. Uh, they would have a contract with the consultant and so on and so forth. Each of such contract is, is the place where the liability and responsibility is defined and has been given a commercial value. Mind you, if you have a code document, a building code document, which defines the roles and responsibilities of an architect or defines a roles and responsibility of a contractor. A contractor could enter into an agreement with a material supplier and pass on this responsibility slash liability to a material supplier. And hence it is, becomes very, very important to understand that the dotted line where you're signing up what all you are signing up for. As an example, in the case of fire doors, a architect could design a building and pass on clearly saying that the role of defining the fire rating in this building is not mine, and you have to enter to an agreement with, let's say, the fire and life safety consultant. So this brings me to the end of uh, today's webinar. In, I would welcome you to write in some of your questions. I have uh, tried to maintain a flow. Unfortunately, uh, the audio uh, did not go very smoothly today and a lot of you uh, had a fair amount of disturbance. I'm gonna now take a small break of about 20, 30 seconds and uh, wait for you to write in questions. I have two questions which was sent to me in an email uh, and I'm going to address them 
in the subsequent slide. Please feel free to write in your questions and I'm going to take two questions which were sent across. Uh, one from the UAE, which is, is it permitted to change the brand of ironmongery specified in the COC slash fire test report? And as I mentioned uh, through the course of the webinar as well, this is something which is uh, up to the how the procurement is being done. The ironmongery or hardware which is mentioned in a COC is hard coded. A, the ironmongery which is mentioned in a fire test report is hard coded, which means it is only applicable for that given uh, fire door which has been tested. But in case the manufacturer is supplying for a given project uh, a different set of fire doors, it can be evaluated whether the ironmongery you desire can be used by interchanging or not. Uh, this engineering evaluation could be done on the base of the certification and listing of the hardware, or this engineering evaluation might even require a different set of fire tests. Another question which came from the UK, very, very good question that how important is the gap at the bottom of the fire door in relation to passing the fire test and fitting the door at site and tolerances for the flow finishes. This is a fantastic question and I must say that the answer to this question does not lie with the certification body. The answer to this question lies in understanding that there are several parameters, this being one of so many, that can affect the result of a fire test. It is the door supplier who is taking on the responsibility as a door supplier who will explain and give an assurance that how his door sets should be installed. And if they are installed in a given way, then they are covered by the certification and listing. The tolerances could, of course, vary. <clears throat> Let me move to some questions who, which are coming on the chat. Do all the fire rated doors are tested with seals for UL standard? <clears throat> Again, uh, question from Miras. Uh, I would like to answer that this is not something that can be generically answered. A fire door assembly which is the responsibility of a fire door manufacturer or a fire door supplier is that specific to that. His solution will be given and have a given fire rating only for the way he is describing the fire door to be installed. And it comes from how he has developed his fire door to be tested and how his fire door gets listed. Is it the responsibility of a fire door supplier to provide information regarding suitable hardware and fixing mechanism? Absolutely, Ravindu. This is the responsibility of the fire door supplier because the fire door supplier who is claiming that his fire door assembly is going to provide you a fire resistance rating of let's say two hours. His claim is dependent on proof of a fire test or a series of fire tests that have been done. And it is only what he as a or she as the fire door supplier at, defines will work. Anything else will not work. When a door is listed and certified as a 60 minute fire rated door, is it only for integrity or also insulation? When a fire door is listed for 60 minutes, the listing report will be very, very clear whether that 60 minutes is for integrity or insulation or both. I would welcome you to go to our certification directory, TBW 
search cert.com and you can click on scheme 1 which lists a large number of fire door manufacturers our listing report is very very clear on the doors that have been tested and certified to UL BS and EN standards which the listing would define both the integrity and insulation are fire doors required to achieve insulation as per the codes and standards i would not be able to give you a straight answer uh, padmanan because different codes and standards could have different requirements as per the specifications of different door types is there any way to get certifications for fire rated doors where manufacturer is unknown i am very sorry if the manufacturer is unknown then the certification and listing is also unknown clearances for doors under ul are determined by nfpa 80 i'm sorry craig i'm not getting the question exactly what nfpa 80 covers if that is what you want me to talk about well it's a subject of a of a new webinar fire door when tested to nfpa 252 is it required to meet only integrity requirement or both integrity and insulation Atho, I'm going to come back to you on this in an email, but as far as I know, both are defined. DCD requirement, very generic. I'm sorry, I cannot answer that. I'm going to take two more questions before I close this. When a door assembly is prepared at the lab, are the clearances considered as per the standard? Sorry, I will have to connect with you offline. I am not getting this question. So there is a question from Shadi talking about instruction or rules we can follow for exit doors at staircase area. Uh, I am not sure which jurisdiction this is for, but ideally there should be a fire and life safety code in the region. And if not, you can always go back to some of the international codes which define these. So that brings me to the end of the question answer session. There is a last question which says, what will we do if the certified person, if any complain, I'm not able to get that question right. But I would like to say that there are two ways generally, which bring about uh, liability and responsibility. One is the legal construct in a given country, what it is, and two, the contract. So if there is a contract in place, the contract would and should define all of these. Thank you very, very much for attending the session today. I wish it had gone a little more smoothly than it did. Um, but I am I am uh, I wish the audio was not a problem. I'm going to get back to each one of you uh, if there is anything else that is required. Thank you very, very much for the day. Bye bye.
Hello, Mr. Abhishek. Uh, me as well. I'm watching your webinar right now. Okay. I